أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأصحابه وأهل بيته عدد الصلاة والصوم The whole Muslim Ummah is in distress. We are being killed. We are being tortured. Our kids are being raped. Hijabs are of our sisters are being ripped apart. Our kids, our elders, our youngsters, our ladies, our gents, are being bullied in bright daylight and 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 these kuffars have the audacity to drop bombs right on our homes and in broad daylight right in our faces right in the faces of these nuclear powers right in the faces of these Arab so-called brethren and right in the faces of these Arabs who call themselves Khadimain, al harmain Al-Sharifain. Nobody in this whole world has the audacity, has the courage to call upon Israel to stop the bombing to not kill our kids nobody has the courage to call the Americans right in their face to stop the Israeli aid every one of us every Muslim every citizen and every leader all over the world is only worrying for his own self if I am getting the food on my table today I have no problem with my kids being killed in Palestine with my sisters being raped in Burma and with my brothers being brainwashed and being prisoned in China that is the state of Ummah right now Look at me, what am I talking about? I'm not talking about the states. I'm not talking about the Palestinians and the Iraqis and the Libyans and the, and the Syrians and the Pakistanis and, 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 and I'm not talking about that stuff. I am talking about we, us. I'm talking about us that we were before our colonization. And I'm talking about us that we were a hundred years ago. That is us. That is all of us. There is no Palestinian. There is no Syrian. There is no Iraqi. There is no Pakistani. There is no Bangladeshi. We are all us. We are all us. And like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Muslims are like one body. If one part, if one organ is in trouble, is sick, the whole body gets sick. That is us. What happened to us? Every one of us is just worrying of, about our food, our jobs, our future. What future? You know, every youngster in Palestine wakes up for a future every day and a lot of them are being killed the same day right in front of our eyes what future we are living in the end times Israel has completed its plan of building the third temple and they're about to materialize those plans. They must have built it already underneath Aqsa. Who knows? And we, and we, 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 we worry about going to school the next day, going to the job next day, getting the next food, 
getting our next car, next computer, next mobile phone. What are we doing? Where are we going? Come on guys, open your eyes. Now you would ask, what can I do living in Pakistan? What can I do living in Saudi Arabia? You are everything. We are living in a democratic world. For good or for bad, but it is a democratic world. You matter. If you speak, your government's feet tremble. If you speak, if you discuss, if you talk with each other, it is a trouble for your governments. And if enough of us speak, it becomes obligatory for our governments to take action. Now, you would ask, what action? Even if we stop or slow down the trade with US and Israel, for one month, they would be forced to stop their activities. But you know, let, let's get this straight. This is not going to happen. We're not going to wake up and, and, and not enough of us are going to wake up so that our governments take action. So, so let's get this straight. We are at this point, we are at the age, we are, at, we, we are living in the era where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us huge wars will take place. Al Malhamatul Kubra is just around the corner, and I'm not making this up. Go go look up a hadith. Go look up eschatology. We are living in the exact same era, and there is no doubt about that. And and all of the scholars of eschatology from all schools of thought agree on that. And stop. Stop keeping your eyes closed and, and stop lying to yourself. You do not know what tomorrow is going to bring. You know, Iraqis, Saddam Hussein and, and, and the citizens of, citizens of Iraq, they, they thought they had a future. They did not. And you know, Muammar Gaddafi, our Libyan brothers and sisters, they thought they had a future. They did not have one. Yemenis, our brothers over there, they thought, and sisters and our children, they thought they had a future. They thought they would make a career. They thought they would have a rich lifestyle. They did not have a career. They did not have a future they were planning. And you know, and, and think about that. Any of us could be next. So, so take action. We are not enough of us going to have going to wake up to take action to, to speak up in enough numbers for our governments to fear. So let's get this straight. We are in the times where great wars would take place. And what would happen when great wars would take place? You know? When Muslims are in their worst condition and great wars are just around the car corner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send someone and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring some hope for the Muslim Ummah and what that hope would be you know where I'm coming from that hope would be Al Mahdi he would be a simple, normal human being, a normal Muslim from the lineage of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and his name would be Muhammad, and his father's name would be like the name of the father of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we are looking for someone whose name would be Muhammad, and his father's name would be Abdullah, and we have to look for him. And I'm not talking from the Shite perspective that he's living in a cave, sleeping or something like that. I'm talking about the Sunni perspective, the true Sunnah, the true Islam that has come to us. So, so it is time to look for that. All of the signs of that person to appear have been completed. And, and we have to look for that person. And any one of us who, who has the anxiety, who feels the pain of the Ummah, would, 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 would cry and would 
would shout his heart out and prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him the path and, and ask Allah to tell if we are living in that time and if that person has born or not. Look, uh, Dr. Israr Ahmed, a very well-known scholar of the modern times, he said a couple of decades ago that he believes all of the signs of the Mahdi have completed and the Mahdi must have born already. So we have to look for that person. And I told you the first sign that he his name would be Muhammad and his father's name would be Abdullah. And he would be from the lineage of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, and where would he be? He would take oath sitting with the wall of Kaaba. But would he be an Arab? Not necessarily. So, so where would he be? Are you looking for him in, 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 in the Arab? world no no brothers and sisters you cannot look for him in the Arab world why because there are clear ahadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam which state Wailul lil Arab so the Arabs they were given the Quran in their own language it was their responsibility first of all to take the Quran hold it and spread its message and its, its Sharia all over the world. And look what they did. They conspired with the, with, with, with the uh, British Empire and they rebelled ag against their own Khilafah. And they created their own states for their own vested gains. And you are expecting that the Mahdi would appear from Arab? No. And this is not me saying that. This is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the last Prophet, then the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is him saying that. And, in, and, and he said that An Subanin radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yuktatalu inda kinzakum thalatha, kulluhum ibn khalifa, ثم لا يصير إلى واحد منهم ثم تطل رايات السود من قبل المشرق فيقتلونكم قتلا لم يقتله قوم ثم ذكروا شيئا لا أحفظه فقال فإذا رأيتموه فبايعوه ولو حبوا على الثلج فَإِنَّهُ خَلِيفَةُ اللَّهُ الْمَهْدِي رَوَاهُ إِبْنُ الْمَاجَ وَالْحَاكِمْ so, so look, where would the Mahdi appear from then? When, when, the three, when the three brothers fight over Khilafah, then the black signs, رَعَيَاتُ السُّودِ Black visuals would arise from the east, and even if you have to go skidding on the snow, you, would, you must show your allegiance with them because there would be Mahdi within them. So Mahdi has to be in the East. We have to look for him in the East. So what lies in the East? That is Pakistan, Afghanistan. And I'm not, I cannot say Iran because that is a, a totally different perspective. Uh, there are hardly any Sunnis over there. So, so we are looking for someone named Muhammad bin Abdullah and that someone must be uh, Hashimi or Sayyid uh, meaning uh, his caste uh, must be Hashmi or Sayyid meaning he must be from the lineage of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there must be something to identify him. And, and what is there something? He must have some sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that only the ones Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give a special weeen would be able to see and identify. 
there is one person there is one person with these signs and his name is and it, this is me talking this is not him claiming Mahdi this is me talking I was looking for him and and this is my academic research you can call this is my own research about that person and I could be wrong frankly I could be wrong this is my research about that person I think that the Mahdi could be this person and the name of the person is Muhammad Qasim why I'm saying that number there are a lot of signs that fall true on him there are still some signs that do not fall true on him but there are some signs that do fall true on him on him so I can say that he's a very 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 solid candidate for Mahdi number one his name is Muhammad Qasim so his first name is Muhammad uh, his father's name was Abdul Karim and Al Karim over here is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning he is the servant of Allah Abdul Karim servant of Allah and so was the name of uh, the father of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Abdullah the servant of Allah so this is quite certain as well that Muhammad Qasim is Muhammad bin Abdul Karim or you can say simply Muhammad bin Abdullah and now uh, what is his lineage his caste is Hashmi that's where the family writes and uh, uh, you can also call him Sayyid so this is quite certain that their lineage is uh, also from uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, another sign of Mahdi uh, that I already said that he would appear from the east and he's in the east he's from Pakistan and uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that his nose would be tall and his uh, forehead would be broad and you can see in the picture it very much uh, falls perfect on Muhammad Qasim so very important sign why would we consider someone to be Mahdi that he could be Mahdi that I already said he must have something that we could identify him from and in the case of Muhammad Qasim he does hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's voice in his dreams also he has seen uh, Prophet Muhammad the final Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam several hundred times in it in his dreams also the message he receives from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dreams is that uh, is that Muslims must eradicate must get rid of all forms of shirk and you see all of the Dajjals all of the liars that have claimed themselves as Mahdi missed this point that all of the prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on this earth were sent to eradicate shirk because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive anything except shirk and this is why all of the prophets were sent to this world and and Muhammad Qasim is not claiming prophet he is explicitly exclusively said clearly said that he is not a prophet he is not claiming a prophet in any case whatsoever and another thing that he sees in his dreams that prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls him my son Prophet Muhammad calls him Qasim, my son. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was called Abu al-Qasim. Uh, so uh, the son of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whose name was Qasim, uh, passed away very young. Uh, but maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took uh, that Qasim uh, from uh, this world. May and, and maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gave another Qasim uh, to the lineage of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that Qasim could become Mahdi and since Mahdi would be the one who would be giving away a lot of uh, food and uh, a lot of money uh, according to uh, a hadith so 
maybe that's uh, the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has picked a person uh, whose name is Qasim as well but his first name uh, in any case whatsoever is Muhammad uh, that is uh, exactly according to the uh, sign uh, explained by uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the last prophet and the most important sign the most important sign and this is also the one that all of the dajjals and and all of the liars before have missed and that is that the mahdi would be someone who would hate who would not like to be the mahdi and the people would take oath from him by force. And until the last point, he would keep on denying, keep on trying to run away from the responsibility. And all of the Dajjals, because they were in a rush, they were in a hurry to, to gain the benefits of this world, all of the Dajjals and all of the Kazabs and all of the liars before, have claimed Mahdi themselves and you know this is me talking and I think Muhammad Qasim could be Mahdi but if you hear from Muhammad Qasim he has been saying for past several years that he is not the Mahdi and he will not claim Mahdi ever this is a very solid point the Mahdi will revive Islam and create one Ummah and will combine all of the sections in the countries and all of the different uh, categories and groups of Ummah into one Ummah and the Mahdi will establish one Khilafah from Pakistan all the way to Jerusalem and after that there would be seven years of peace and after that there would be the Jal and so on and so forth so how would that happen for that matter you would have to look for muhammad qasim's uh, content on youtube and on the internet and you would have to find out what exactly is his content and what is the message that is that he is receiving from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, and and uh, the last prophet the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam through dreams and last but not least that the dreams have a solid and a very strong position in sharia and uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to ask uh, the dreams of uh, his companions uh, in uh, after the fajr prayer and then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself used to tell the interpretation or asked one of the companions uh, to uh, interpret the dreams uh, after hearing from uh, the people. Uh, also, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in in a Sahih hadith that uh, nothing uh, out of the signs and the powers of Nabuwa is left uh, apart from uh, the blessed or true dreams that a mu'min sees for himself or someone uh, some other mu'min sees for him also prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that whoever has seen me sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a dream he has seen me because the satan cannot take my shape call, and this is important and and understand it very clearly if you or someone else has really seen prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his dream then you do not need anyone else approval for that because this is a domain that has been guaranteed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself that the Satan cannot take his shape and when something is guaranteed it is guaranteed it is a source of information it is a source of solid signal from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like the Quran has not been changed uh, from the day it was revealed or on uh, the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it will never be changed until the day of the Qiyamah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said 
وَإِنَّا It is the Quran, it is the book that was that was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is being protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody on earth, nobody in the whole universe can change it because because it is the guarantee of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the final prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no messenger there is no nabi after prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this is the guarantee of prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that whoever sees him in a dream has seen him it was him if you felt that in the dream so now go over and uh, look at the dreams of Muhammad Qasim uh, look at the content of Muhammad Qasim on YouTube uh, and the channel is uh, youtube.com slash Muhammad Qasim PK and uh, his official website is Muhammad Qasim PK.com I hope I made a solid point and you would think over it you would consider it and seek guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the right path and to to make us meet uh, the true Mahdi whoever he is and make us among the army of Mahdi and among the armies who would fight the Jal and among the armies who would be with uh, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam uh, uh, Prophet Isa alayhi salam who would come as an Ummati uh, after the appearance of uh, Dajjal Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna attiba'a warina al-batila batilan warzuqna ajtinaba Allahumma ja'alna min al-salihin waja'alna min al-awwabin waja'alna min al-zahidin waja'alna min ashab al-mahdi waja'alna min ashab Isa Isa ibn Maryam alayhimu salatu wassalam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh